still picked up those valuable points for sixth place. Bit of a race of attrition uh, with lots of cars out, but let's just take a look back at uh, some of the victories of Alex this year. First one came at Long Beach, the streets of Long Beach, then on Cleveland with another victory donut celebration, that remarkable fight back through the field. And now his third win coming on the Michigan Super Speedway. Really tremendous season that he's putting together, Jeremy. Certainly is. He, he is competitive on all the different disciplines, except perhaps for the short oval. He certainly struggled there, but everywhere else, Alex Zanardi has emerged a winner. He's going to be hard to beat in this year's PPG Kart World Series title chase, I think, now. We've got six races to go. Still a lot of racing to be done. Alex Zanardi in the catbird seat. So the, the US 500 this year, it's only the second running of the US 500 as it's being called and last year the victory went to Jimmy Vassa, this year it goes to Alex Zanardi. So uh, the Ganassi team really seem to have been holding on to that, uh, the US 500 trophy, if you like, for the two years so far. Keep it in the family, there's uh, Gilles de Ferran there, he finished uh, strongly of course in third place, just a lap behind the race leaders and the, uh, the celebration goes on down there in Victory Lane, I'm sure there's much hat hat dances to be done for the various different sponsors and so on but certainly a great day for that entire target chip ganassi team of course joe montana there the nfl quarterback superstar of uh, the san francisco uh, 49ers and uh, he, he loves his, his involvement in motor racing it's great to see him part of part of this sport as well as uh, as well as his fantastic football career he loves motor racing now he's hooked Good to see, it's great to see. Let's just uh, tell you about the championship, hopefully we'll get a, a more of a look at it in a moment, but uh, Zanardi is the leader of the championship, he uh, gains the extra point of course for the most laps led today as well, and uh, so he leads the championship from Paul Tracy by six points. Michael Andretti uh, goes down a bit because uh, he is now down in third place on 103 points, Greg Moore is behind Gilles de Ferran. So Gilles de Ferran is in fourth place on 109, 108 points, then Greg Moore on at 95. What it does mean is that Mark Blundell's moved up to eighth place in the championship on 72 points. And that gaggle, really all that top eight, are really close together now, aren't they? So if Mark gets some good results in the latter, the remainder of this season, he's really going to be featuring up there in the championship. No question, he's made up a lot of ground these last uh, three or four races, and another strong finish again here for Mark Blundell. And he's just chipping away, he's moved up from 14th to 12th to 10th, and now eighth place. And, uh, there's several people pretty close ahead of him, so I think we can look for more great things from Mark Blundell over these next few weeks. Good to see. Mid-Ohio is the next uh, racetrack on the calendar. Jeremy, it's a track you know very well. A difficult one, though, isn't it? It's a very tough racetrack. It's, it's only about an hour away from my home in Columbus, Ohio, uh, just a little bit north of there, and it's up and down, uphill, down, down. It's rather like Alton Park, perhaps, or even Cadwell Park, perhaps, uh, in England. Uh, but it's a great racetrack, a big variety of corners. It's a long straight down the back, uh, downhill straight away, leading into the S's, which goes right-handed and left and over a, over a hill there and down the crest. And it's really a great racetrack. The drivers love it. It's a real challenge of a, of a car and a driver. No question to be a fun race in two weeks' time. All the press attention down there for Alex Zanardi, Tupinassi on the left and uh, German Tanner on the right as they get ready to do a bit of celebrating, I should think. There'll be some good parties going on for the Ganassi team tonight. And the fans already beginning to make their way home, but they've enjoyed a good afternoon's racing here, I think. I don't think they'll be too disappointed. It, it was a race that really uh, had drama and excitement all the way through. It was really only in the last 20 laps or so, the last 25, that last stint where suddenly Zanardi had the advantage and he made it pay. Up to then, there was all sorts of stuff going on, wasn't there? There was a lot of attrition. Um, some of it expected, some of it not. Perhaps we thought there'd be more engine problems than there were. There were very few engine problems this afternoon, but a lot of transmission problems. And on, on this sort of a racetrack, that's, that's a big surprise, I think, to just about everybody, including Gilles Adrian Reynard. Um, but uh, good place. effort. And here's Gilles Deferre, third demanding. place finish for, for the young Brazilian driver. In one of these races. Well, I'm very tired indeed. It's... Uh, very, very tiring. I mean, you know, there's vibration, there's the noise. I got ear, ringing ears and my hands are numb and I'm a little dizzy, but it's all right. <laughs> but when you spell all of those things out, are you safe out there running at these speeds under those conditions? Oh, yeah, because you only feel that when you stop the car and you let the, the concentration go away, you know, then all of a sudden it hits you. But when you're out there, you know, at least I was trying to get, trying really hard to catch Tracy and your concentration is 100% and you hardly feel anything, you're just, you know, focusing on the 
on uh, getting best result. Now, you take a step here in the championship point standings. I believe you'll be in the number three spot. Were you aware of the fact that Andretti and uh, Moore were having problems early? Yes, I was. <laughs> Indeed, I was very aware. Uh, yeah, I was told that on the radio early on. And, uh, you know, but really, that re didn't really influence our, our, uh, our, um, our strategy. All we wanted to do is to get to the end in the best possible way. They want you on the podium. Go enjoy it. Thank you. Thank you. And we've caught up with Paul Tracy. And, Paul, I'll tell you, not bad for a guy that had no telemetry, had no radio, lost your helmet. This has been a tough weekend for you. This has been a uh, tough weekend for everybody, and for the crew. Everybody did a great job on the team. And uh, given all the circumstances that we had today, I mean, uh, we had the cards stacked against us. And, uh, you know, we hung in there and just went off our schedule. And, uh, you know, we got a good finish. We ran up a second for a while. So, you know, we just didn't have the handling there at the end to, uh, to stay with those guys. Near the end of the race, we noticed that some of the guys began to overtake you. Was that a result of the handles, or were you a little concerned about fuel as well? No, we were good on fuel because we pitted late, and, uh, you know, we just had a big, big push, came into the car the last 70 laps, and uh, we tried to take a whack at it and dial it out in the last stop with a couple turns of front wing and more stagger. But, uh, you know, as the run went on, it started pushing more, and uh, Joe just, you know, reeled me in and, and got by. You've done an incredible job with what many people say is a chassis that really needs some work. Have you guys gained on it at all? Are things getting better for Team Penske? Well, they weren't looking good today, but we finished well. And, uh, you know, we've got some work to do. We know that. And, and uh, we're going to test for three days this week and uh, see what we can find. Bob? So, good effort from Paul Tracy today. And a very, very important collection of points for that fourth place for Paul Tracy. And... Uh, that could be very vital when we get to the end of the championship. So there, a quick look at the results again. Down the uh, second bunch that still score points. Dennis Vitola, Max Papis, Hiro Matsushita, Guelta Sales, Juan Fangio and Art Meyer. And then the rest of them who didn't manage to finish the race. And what a long, long list. That was, of cars that failed to finish here today. Hopefully, they'll have a bit more luck when they come back to the Mid-Ohio sports car course in a couple of weeks' time. And, of course, Eurosport will be there to bring you full coverage of the race. We'll be bringing you the race live. We'll be bringing you the qualifying on the Saturday as well and continue what is turning out to be a tremendous battle in the championship. There it is. Well, a very short look, unfortunately. <laughs> so it just rapidly changes to the second page. But basically, it means there's just six points. Uh, there we are, between Alex Zanardi and Paul Tracy. And Gilda Ferran is now in third ahead of Michael Andretti. Hope you've enjoyed the show. From Jeremy Shaw and Ben Edwards, bye-bye. Oh, a bit early there, sorry, with my bye-bye. Just sort of uh, still looking at the promo for next week. But uh, we've certainly enjoyed bringing you the show today. Had a few uh, little problems there. But uh, I hope you will join us back. We've still got some few races still to go. The Vanderbilt Cup there is what we're looking at. That's the trophy for the win today. Alex Zanardi is going to be the proud owner of that that cup. And, of course, he stays in the team because uh, the team had it from last year. And it can stay proudly on display. So once again, thank you for joining us today. Thanks to Jack Arud and Gary Gerald down in the pits as well, bringing us all the news. We'll see you again from Mid-Ohio. Bye-bye.